सदाशिवसमारंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा श्रुतिस्मृतिपुराण आल करुणाल नमा भगवत् शंकर लोकशंक शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्रभाष्यकृत वंदे भगवतपुनपुन समस्तजनकल्याण निरत करुणाम नमा चिन्म देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्तिद विभागिने व्याहाय मूर्त नम दक्षिणामूर्त नम विश्व दर्पण दृश्यमगरी तुल्यम निजातर्गत 
Yesterday there was a question asked why two examples were given? If Nidra example, the first verse, if the dream example is so perfect, why do you need an example of Darpana Drishyamana Nagari? So something struck me. See, every example has got a defect. What is the defect of dream example? Huh? Why not? In dream you perfectly interact. Huh? Loudly. No, 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 not about darpana, about the dream. See, darpana, lot of defects are there, accept it. What is the defect of the dream example? Huh? No, no, no. Huh? Everybody is seeing. In the dream, you can't make out that it is dream. What is the defect of the dream? The defect is, ah, you have to say. That is okay. See, in the dream, the defect of this example is, the moment you wake up, the dream world is gone. Whereas, after awakening to this reality, the world still remains. A Mahatma, after realizing also, he continues to see the world. Whereas, in dream, the moment you wake up, will you continue to see the world? No. This is one defect. So, the moment the world is falsified, it ceases to exist. Where? In the dream. 
this is one defect of the dream example whereas a mahatma after enlightenment also till that prarabdha continues the prarabdha of the body continues he continues to experience the world no doubt it's a falsified world but that experience continues so this is a defect of the dream example so that particular defect is taken away by this example of darpana nagari you know it is unreal but you are seeing it so we need an example where something is falsified but something is still existing something is still being perceived in spite of falsification see every example will have some defect so that is why we have so many examples pratibimbavada reflection theory is there it has also its defects avachchedavada is there it has also defects so whatever is applicable only that we have to take darpana nagari what is the defect there is a real world outside so you have to you know uh, give up that aspect every def- every example will have a defect that defect will have to be given up only that which is which is relatable only that aspect has to be taken yes so something struck so i thought i'll just share okay so we are up to 4 so what is the first verse atma alone exist nothing else what is the second verse this it's all about creation answering the creation no doubt creation is illusory but still creation has a purpose what is the cause of creation what is the nature of creation everything related to creation is answered in the second verse now again bhagwan comes back to the self so the nature of the self as sat is discussed in the third verse yasevam sadatmakam yaseva sphuranam sadatmakam which is of the nature of sat so that aspect was discussed in the third verse in the fourth verse what was discussed chit isn't it jnanam chit aspect the ability to illumine right so what have we discussed there consciousness is the ultimate illuminator in fact consciousness is the only illuminator right is the only knower the moment that knower is defiled how is the knower defiled made impure when that pure consciousness gets identified with the matter that knower becomes defiled see the ego is also a knower yes or no when we know it's actually the ego which is knowing what is the difference between the consciousness knowing and the ego's knowing consciousness identified with the bmi is the ego so what has happened now some part of prakriti has mixed with purusha some part of kshetra has combined with kshetrajna kshetrajna is only one the ultimate knower is only one but when that knower identifies with the instrument another knower is born an inferior knower is born what is this inferior knower the ego so inferior knower must have inferior knowing ability superior knower must be omniscient must know everything because there is effortless knowing because there is absolute knowing hmm? 
knowing continues throughout there is no problem at all that is superior knowing but the moment that knower identifies with the imperfect bmi the knowing also becomes imperfect the knowing also becomes defective that knowing becomes effortful right so every ego will be a defective ego only because the instruments are defective a mahatma is called a man of perfection why is he a man of perfection not because his bmi is perfect remember this no bmi can be perfect a mahatma also will have limitations at the body at the mind at the intellect any bmi is imperfect so therefore everybody is imperfect but a mahatma we call a man of perfection why not because bmi is perfect but because his identify identification is with the perfect consciousness and he has disidentified from imperfect bmi therefore this man is called man of perfection perfection can never be a property of bmi every bmi is imperfect right so consciousness knowing is perfect knowing but the moment that consciousness identifies with a particular equipment then that knowing correspondingly becomes inferior exactly like sun is brilliant but the moment that sunlight is reflected on a mirror the light coming from the mirror is far far inferior to the original light right somebody asked bhagwan shankaracharya bhagwan you are sarvatnya you know everything you know what bhagwan did he had this stick i think some river was flowing in front he said the knowledge which i have is only this much he just dipped that stick in that water and some drops you know water was only this much i know <laughs> if this is knowledge and this is all what i know so what is meant by that the instrument has its limitation whoever you are right every instrument will have its limitation electricity may have infinite power but the equipment the moment you connect an equipment that equipment limits the power of that electricity isn't it one bulb may be 5 watts another may be 10 watts and maybe 100 watts 1000 watts but there is a limit beyond that it can't handle hmm. right so this is about consciousness now the next topic is about how in what all ways the self is misunderstood that is the topic taken up next let us chant verse number 5 page number 67 देहं प्राणमपींद्रियाण्यपिचलाबुद्धि चून्यं विदु स्त्रीबालांधजोपमस्वी भ्रांताभृशं वादिन मयाशक्तिलासकम शक्ति 
व्यामोह संहारिणे तस्म श्री गुरमूर्त नम इद श्री दक्षिणामूर्त देहम प्राणमपींद्रियाण्यपिचला बुद्धि चून्यम विदु स्त्रीबालांधजोपमस्वी भ्राता भृशं वादीन मयाशक्तिलासकमोह संहारिणे तस्म श्रीगुरमूर्त नम इद दक्षिणामूर्त यश मै प्रोस्ट्रेशन अंडु दक्षिणामूर्ति हुईजी संहारिणे हि इज अ डिस्ट्रॉयर व्हाट डज ही डिस्ट्रॉय व्यामोह संहारिणे He destroys vyamoham. Moham means what? Delusion. Vyamoham means what? Intense, extreme delusion. Hmm. What is written here? Not just vyamoham. Maha vyamoham. <laughs> you understand? Two adjectives, as the one is not enough. The moham is so 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 intense, so 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 strong. Vyamoha, maha vyamoha samharini. But from where is this moham coming from? Who created it? Kalpita created by Vilasa sport of Maya Shakti, the power of Maya. So, the great delusion created by the play Vilasa, the play of the power of Maya. Maya Shakti. विलास कल्पित महा व्यामोहम सो व्हाट डज दिस गुरु डू ही संहारिणे इज ए संहारन डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ दिस माया बट भगवान टेल मी व्हाट इज दिस माया व्हाट डज दिस माया डू माया 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 यू से बट व्हाट डज दिस माया डू हा so that is the description given deham pranam indriyani chalam buddhim shunyam etc <coughs> aham iti viduhu this is me this notion is vyamoha so what is vyamoha wrong notion about oneself aham all the vyamoha is regarding aham aham iti viduhu this is me so so many terms are given what all ways i think of myself right so what are they deham pranam indriyani chalam buddhim shunyam right so these people who have such delusion intensely deluded suppose you try to correct them <laughs> what will they do bhrisham vadina they will vehemently argue i am right who are you to correct me i am perfect right 
drisham vadinah means the one who argues so therefore bhagwan says bhranta <laughs> bhranta means what actually it means mad people but here bhranta means those who have bhranti delusion those who are deluded are called bhranta bhranta they are like upamah they are like stri woman bal child andha blind jada 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 what you call inert dumb uh, what you call gross jada what is written here idiot <laughs> jada they are like these people my god swami ji everything is okay why is three is included swami ji <laughs> that, that. <laughs> that will come okay so first let us let us analyze our delusion we are experts in it no explanation is needed but even then so this is called mahavyamoham what is mahavyamoham delusion delusion regarding what delusion regarding aham i so what are the different different terms in the first one is deham aham iti this is the first one i am the body what is this mahavyamo a great delusion i am the body this delusion is so 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 strong that we don't even question it the moment the child is born it is accepted taken for granted this boy is this body full stop just like we are all this body it is not even questioned in the society your identity is based on your body means what your date of birth <laughs> your parents everything is revolving around the body isn't it is called as mahavyamo you are never even questioning it you take it for granted because it is understood what is there to discuss there is a meaning <laughs> the delusion is so deep that you don't even question it you naturally accept it a doubt also doesn't come in the mind whether i am the body or not absolutely wrong is comfortably accepted as absolutely right this is called delusion <laughs> right even when someone comes to correct you bhrisham vadinah there you are So the first one is deham. Now just imagine in this society, how much percentage of the people come under this category? Ha, ninety-nine point nine 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 nine. You can go on. <laughs> okay, very rarely somebody at least even inquires about the self. Forget about realizing the self. Manusya nam sahasreshu. कश्चिद यतते सिद्धये यतताम अपि सिद्धानाम कश्चिन माम वेति तत्वतः सो व्हाई इज इट व्हाई हैज इट बिकम सो नेचुरल टू अस टू टेक दिस बॉडी एज आवर सेल्स आवर सुपरफिशियल एनालिसिस ऑफ आवर एक्सपीरियंस इट इज नॉट दैट विदाउट बेस वी आर यू नो एक्सेप्टिंग इट नो देयर इज सम बेस we also analyze life we analyze life without the guidance of the scriptures we analyze life and come to certain conclusion one such conclusion is 
this body is me right how did we come to this conclusion there are so many factors a person is available for interaction only when that person's body is born till then we are not able to interact with that person so that person is available for interaction as long as the body is there the moment the body dies that person is no more available therefore that person is body he is there when the body is there he is not there when the body is not there so therefore he is equal to body number 1 in ourselves also we see this outside the periphery of this body i am not experiencing anything anything inside the what you call boundaries of the body i experience everything pain feelings etc so outside i am not inside i am inside i am because anything happening inside affects me so therefore i am within the body i am the body you see so all these conclusions are based on experience only we have analyzed though unknowingly though without guidance but analysis is there so therefore i am the body right deham aham iti so these people who belong to this category such philosophers they are called as charvakas charvakas materialistic people that is also a darshanam charvaka darshanam <laughs> right so what is their darshanam yavat jivet sukham jivet ऋणम कृत्वा घृतम पिबे भस्मी भूत पुनरागमन कुतः सो वी पीपल हैव वन प्रॉब्लम एनीथिंग चैंटेड इन संस्कृत वी टेक दैट या इट हैज टू बी ट्रू एनीथिंग इन संस्कृत दिस इज चारवाक दर्शनम i have chanted melodiously that's all okay yavat jivet sukham jivet materialistic philosophy this is as long as you are living live happily ranam krutva ghritam bibet ranam krutva beg borrow or steal ranam krutva means take loan <laughs> and ghritam pibet enjoy life drink ghee that's the meaning ghritam pibet why do you believe in such philosophy because bhasmi bhutasya dehasya once the body has become bhasma ash punaragamanam kutah how can it come back so all these people who talk about rebirth and all nonsense the body once it has become ash it cannot come back from ash so therefore so therefore what should be done what should be the purpose of life you are existing as long as the body is existing when the body has become non existent you are not there so therefore enjoy every moment of your life how to enjoy eat drink and be merry nice philosophy no that's why it's called a charu vak charu ma very sweet to hear you know <laughs> don't worry about all this you know punya papa etc which punya papa once you are finished so live the way you want in this world corruption is necessary dishonesty is necessary because teedhi ungli se hi ghee nikalti hai yes or no you have to be crooked in life otherwise you know things won't be so do all that no 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 these are all papa 
want papa once the body is gone you are finished that's why it is charu walk you are given the freedom to live the way you want total licentiousness total freedom this is very appealing that's why it's called a charu walk very appealing and no strain also the philosophy is so easy to understand no difficulty right so therefore at a very young age itself live a comfortable life yavat jeeve sukham jeeve no no how can i live comfortably when i am young i have no money when i am old i have money <laughs> but no ability to enjoy ha therefore take everything in installments fridge tv flat everything in installment the whole life is there to pay off all this you know so on one side you are enjoying also on the other side <laughs> the whole life you enjoy this is called charvaka philosophy they don't believe in punya papa why they don't believe because you are not there after death and after death everything is over right so this is deham no no don't say that this is said by bhagwan shankaracharya ji huh? <laughs> they all fall under the category of bhrantaha <laughs> okay this is first category second one what is the second one deham pranam i am prana no who is this i am prana fellow see the point is this when you observe this body now remember just don't think that only this deham no we have some of this in everything we all of us have okay don't think that some charvaka is somewhere no no i am that <laughs> all these are some element i am also there in that so always whenever such criticisms are there don't point fingers at others look at our self to what extent i am also a charvak second one is prana prana aham iti viduhu now how can i be prana see if you see the body as long as breathing is happening i am alive the moment breathing goes away breathing stops ceases body is dead therefore see i am prana prana exists i am there prana gone i am gone and also it is said at the time of death prana vayu exits you know <laughs> through some hole <laughs> it exists and when it that exists it is as though the jivatma has exited so somewhere jivatma is sam prana only this is one way of understanding another way is you see i am prana doesn't actually mean that that whenever we are very much identified with prana dharma then also we can use this definition what is the prana dharma hunger and thirst mainly hunger and thirst so people who are too much into eating and drinking their attention is only upon what to eat next <laughs> they have a plan early morning getting up what should i drink early morning something and breakfast to it has to be there what to cook for breakfast mind is all the time thinking and 11 o'clock something has to be taken doctor also has said no your stomach should not be empty <laughs> constantly lunch time minimum six items should be had chai hai chai 
lunch time. They gave him five o'clock, some snacks and this and that. So if you see, the whole day this person is, where is he existing? Inside his stomach. As Samana Vayu. <laughs> there is no Vayu enough. There is no Prana Shakti enough to exercise the brain. All the Prana Shakti is fully utilized in digesting the body. And their language, their analysis of life. Swamiji, if you go there, you must eat that Pani Puri, Swamiji. That place is famous for Pani Puri. <laughs> Aray, there are so many other things in that place. Temples are there, institutions are there. That fellow doesn't know anything. Certain places are named only after eatables. Lonawala, there you are. <laughs> Lonawala, chikki. There are so many other things in Lonawala, but no. Eatable is famous. If you are going there, you must have it. Otherwise, what is the use of living? <laughs> you understand? So see, that aspect is called, because prana dharma is hunger and thirst. How to satiate hunger and thirst in different, different, different creative ways. Lot of research and development is happening in that field. All over the world. Hmm? Right. It's called as prana dharma. Hmm. Because your mind is occupied with that, you see. Mind is all the time busy with that. You may not say that I am prana. <laughs> you may not say that. <laughs> but this behavior shows. <laughs> you see? So, deham, pranam. Of course, other people are little, you know, advanced. They are busy with pranayama. Those people also must be taken into account. You will always find that when, the, when you do pranayama, what happens? The mind becomes quiet. So when the mind becomes quiet, they think, this is the way to happiness. So they get stuck there. Pranayama parayana, such people are there. The whole day, five hours, ten hours, they do pranayama. And it is true, when the mind is quiet, when the prana is slow, steady, deep, etc., mind also, Bhagavan Ramana Maharshi says that. Vayurodhanat liyate manah jala pakshivat rodha sadhanam. One such technique is this. Vayurodhanat manah liyate. The mind becomes quiet just like jala pakshivat. Just like a bird is caught up in the net and the bird cannot fly. Extremely fickle, restless bird, the moment it is under that net, it can't do anything. In the same way, mind becomes, mind is extremely chanchala, but that mind can be caught by prana. So then, when you experience that peace, you tend to misunderstand that the way to peace is pranayama. So they are busy with pranayama. This also can be the meaning here. Aham prana. See, whatever you are possessed of, <laughs> that you are. All the time mind is thinking about that. So that particular aspect of personality you are, that, that is a meaning. So, deham pranam apindriyani. Third one, indriyani. I am the senses. Now what does it mean? This person is fully occupied regarding yadrishtam yatsrutam. Yes. Seeing, hearing, tasting, smelling, etc. So where is he now? Upon the sense level, perception level. All the time busy with the world only. All the time busy with the world. 
we are attached to the world such people are addicted to news channels <laughs> what is happening where right they will see all the news channels and they have up to date news not just about news everything so their eatable also has to be taken into account gossip also has to be taken into account everything but the point is they are busy with the senses now what is their philosophy whatever i see is true this is the thing so you say oh my dear there is god god who has seen god to me that there is god i am a rationalist person they are all this category only indriyan they want a proof at the indriya level only then they will accept all the scientists belong to this category what i see that alone i will believe if you want to prove something show me prove it my senses must be able to see it what my senses show that alone is true nothing else is true so then these people can be put under indriyan deham prana indriyani what is the next one chalam buddhi what is that <laughs> no buddhi there means now it is bhagwan shankara chari ji is talking about a particular philosophy a buddhist philosophy and what is the buddhist philosophy there according to them consciousness is not something steady it is flickering chalam buddhi their buddhi means consciousness these buddhists are called yoga charas that's a particular system of philosophy buddhist philosophy so according to them everything is changing what about consciousness it is also changing it is also perishable so therefore they give the example of a flame you know the flame which is kept in a breezeless pot how it will be very steady just because it is steady don't think that nothing is happening there every moment oil is getting burned there is steadiness but there is change hmm? just like the flow of ghee there is steadiness oil you know there is perfect steady don't think that nothing is happening there no no every moment change in the same way in the same way consciousness appears steady but it is not steady it is continuously perishing now this particular philosophy is called chalam buddhi here now so dangerous philosophy it is because you know you can't deny it the examples are also perfect you by your own experience cannot find out whether this consciousness is really perishing or it is imperishable you don't know that is where the scriptures come to our rescue shruti pramanam is there so bhagwan shankaracharya is criticizing such philosophers there they are called as kshanika vijnanavadis they be, they believe in kshanika vijnanam every moment there is change moment to moment change in consciousness kshanika vijnanavadis they are called Hmm. chalam buddhim the next one shunyavadis who is the shunyavadi again another system of buddhist philosophy bhagwan shankaracharya when he was born he is said almost 72 different schools of philosophies were fighting with each other trying to assert their supremacy 
that is why bhagwan had to be born it take avatar and you know defeat all of them in vagvada and finally established advaita so these are all the different different ways in which you can miss understand wrongly understand the self is a point so what is this shunyavadi now they are also so logical shunya means there is nothing why do you say there is nothing see where do you see the world in the mind yes when the mind becomes silent what happens to the mind no mind because mind is flow of thoughts as the mind becomes quiet what happens to the mind the mind disappears when the mind disappears what should happen to the world world disappears therefore therefore what everything is shunyam mind has gone to shunyam so therefore world is also shunyam so therefore what is the purpose of life <laughs> attain shunyam they are called shunyavadi there is nothing now these people have come very very close to advaita bhagwan just needed a push they said okay you say shunyavadi who is the one who is experiencing shunyam checkmate the negator of the world cannot be negated it is said that is the way bhagwan defeated them you say shunya fine how did you know that there is shunya that means you have experienced it that means the experiencer of shunya is there right shunyavadi so this is another philosophy they are called as shunyava they are called as madhyamikas so what is bhagwan statement here they are all brisham vadinah they vehemently argue that we alone are right our understanding is right nobody need to teach us this is called as you know lack of open mindedness can you teach or correct such people no now when we are discussing this so these are all the different different ways of misunderstanding the self that is the way we have to understand we are not here to criticize others and all everybody has to go through these stages actually speaking in fact this is the way we evolve also these are all the different stages of evolution these are all the different possible doubts we will have about ourselves and when these doubts come what is our attitude towards this doubt what are the defects in the mind which will prevent us from gaining knowledge these defects are mentioned as stri bala andh jada so here stri doesn't mean woman stri means a particular mindset which is generally found in women because see sadhana has to be done with what mind so we are not bothered which body you have whether man's body or woman's body we don't care about your body because sadhana is done by mind knowledge has to be gained by mind so that mind must be a fit mind that mind can have these defects so a man also can have a three attitude he may be physically a man but he will have this defect then he will be a three only in that context so what these things are i think we will discuss in the next class <laughs> stree bala andh jad so these are all the different different defects of the mind which we have to take care which we have to escape right tu hai anath bandho karuna sindho
तू है अनाथ बंधो करुणा सिंधो ओम गुरुदेव जय गुरुदेव दुख और दर्द दूर करो दुख और दर्द दूर करो सुख का कारण दुख का निवारण सुख का कारण दुख का निवारण मैं क्या जानू तेरी महिमा मैं क्या जानू तेरी महिमा माया में आवे सब ही अंधेरा माया में आवे सब ही अंधेरा तू है अनाथ बंधो करुणा सिंधो जन्म जन्म के दुख बिसराओ जन्म जन्म के दुख बिसराओ बंधन को सूत्रास निवारो बंधन कोटि सूत्रास निवारो मैं क्या जानू तेरी लीला मैं क्या जानू तेरी लीला माया में आवे सब ही अंधेरा माया में आवे सब ही अंधेरा तू है अनाथ बंधो करुणा सिंधो
स्वस्ति प्रजाभ्य पिपालयताेन मगेन महीं महिषा गोभ्राह्मणीभ्य शुभमस्त नि काले वर्ष तो पर्जन्य पृथ्वी सालिनी देशो शोभरहिता ब्राह्मण सन्त निर्भया स्वस्ति भवतु भवतु पूर्ण भवतु मंगल सुखिनः सर्वे सन्त निरामया भद्रा पश्य कशिदुख भवे असतो मद्गमय तमसो मोतिर्गमय मृत्योर्मा अमृत गमय ओ पूर्णम पूर्णमीद पूर्णा पूर्णमुजते पूर्णश पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओ शाति 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 हरि ओ श्रीगुरभ्यो नम हरि ओम